didn't see you there. It all started early this morning. From hunting ghosts to Bigfoot, UFOs, cryptids, true crime, paranormal, and more. I've always wanted to see a UFO. Oh, I was I was researching for your entertainment. That's Bigfoot's guess. He basically wrote the book on Munner Cole. We aren't really comedians. What if Buddha did cocaine? The Adams Family on meth. This, this is, is the, the Black, Black Hat, Hat Report. Report. See you on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know how we got here. So far, you know, we've been driving, and I don't know how long we haven't even been talking. We, I just been sitting here feeling that something's going to happen, and I'm not really too afraid. Except right now, I am. At that time, I didn't feel as afraid. <laughs> Why are you crying if you're not afraid? I'm afraid now, but I was oh, I, I don't I, I wasn't afraid I, I was afraid when I saw the men in the rope. Men in the rope. <laughs> I never been so afraid in my life. Tell me about the men in the rope. <laughs> it's all right now. You're safe here. Tell me about the men in the road. We we're driving along we we're on a tide road. And all of a sudden, without any warning or any reason or rhyme or anything, body made a, uh, he almost, the prank, I think he even squealed, he stopped so suddenly, and made this sharp, left hand turn, to the highway, and we went onto this narrow road, so I was wondering what, what he was doing down here, but, he wasn't saying anything, and I wasn't. I figured, well, maybe we're lost, but so what? We'll come out somewhere. And we're going along, and there was a sharp curve in the road. And as we went around the curve, there were trees. There were a lot of tall, tall trees on my side. I don't know about Bonnie's side of the road, but... There was these men standing in the highway, and I wasn't too afraid when I saw them. They were standing there, and I thought, well, you know, there was soundful. There was, oh, I don't know. And they were just, you couldn't get a good look at them. But then I thought, well, you know, are they in a car and the car broken down? Or what are they doing there? And Bonnie, of course, had to stop. And then he, he stops the car. And these men started to come up to the car. They, they, they separated. They came up in two groups. And when they started to do that, I, I got real scared. Yes, the, the, the car motor died. The car stopped. And, and when they started coming up, Barney tried to start the car. He tried to start it, and you know how a motor of a car would just turn over, turn over, it won't fire. And he started to stop the car. He did what? He tried to start the car, yes. and it won't stop. And the medic coming to us, and I think, well, I can't get away from this. I can, if I get the car door open, I can run into the woods and hide. And I'm thinking it, and I just put my hand on the car door and open it, and just, and the men come up, and they open it for me. And they open the car door, and this, this, right, 
okay, big man. Get a squad. <laughs> Next day, get out of the FBI. I didn't hear that. Uh, two men, this, this is Kato, and this one, two, three men, yep. and then this one, two more behind them. Yes. Uh, one man puts his hands out. Go on. I don't know what happened. You can remember everything now. What do these men look like? Could you see their faces? No. How were they dressed? I like something so rough. Did they have on any uniform or were they in ordinary clothes? No, I like uniform. Uniform. Does it resemble any uniform you know? I couldn't see. And there's a couple of men behind me. And then there's Barney. And he... <laughs> there's a man on each side of him. And my eyes are open. My body's still asleep. He's walking and he's asleep. And... Thank you. And I think to get mad. And they go, who the heck are these characters and what do they think they're doing? And so I turn around and I say, Barney, wake up. Barney, why don't you wake up? And he doesn't pay any attention. He keeps walking. And I keep going a little bit further and I turn around and I say his name again, Barney, wake up. And he doesn't pay any attention. And then the man who's walking beside me here says, oh, is his name Barney? And I turned around and I looked at this man and I figured it's none of his business. So I didn't speak to him. Did we keep walking? And I try to wake Body up again. He said, Body, Body, wake up. And he doesn't. So the man said, he asked me again, he said, is Barney his name? Then I would ask him, so that he says, he says, don't be afraid. You don't have any reason to be afraid. We're not going to harm you. But we just want to do some tests. When the tests are over with, we'll take you and body back and put you in your car. And you'll be on your way back home in no time. And so, I mean, he was 
it was sort of reassuring in a way, but I wasn't, can't say that I trusted what he said. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen, and we kept walking, and the body was still asleep, and then... You mean he was walking in his sleep? Yeah, he was just like sleepwalking. These men spoke good English? Uh, only one spoke, the one who was on my left. And he said, and then he was more or less... He had an accent. He he said sort of a foreign accent. But he was very, you know, businesslike. And so then we kept walking. And we came to. Clearing. And there was the case of the clearing, and there was. Oh, I wish it was lighter so I could get a better picture of that. There was a ramp in the door. There was a... It, the object was on the ground. The object was on the ground? Yeah. I think it was the same when I was watching in the sky. And it was... And there were trees, and there was a path, and there was this clearing. And this object... Just, oh, the clearing I could see just about filled up. Filled up the clearing. And they're taking me up to the object. Now, I don't want to go on it. I don't want to. I don't know what's going to happen if I go on it. I don't want to go. And I go up the ramp. And I go inside. And there's a corridor. To the left. We go up the corridor. And there's a room. And they start to take me in the room. Some of the men come in the room with this man who speaks English and me. They stay for a minute. I don't know who they are. I guess maybe there's a crew. But they only stay for a minute. And the man who speaks English, is there. And he, another man comes in. I haven't seen him before. I think he's a doctor. And they... They came in the door. And I think he's got... I don't know how our nervous system is that, but I hope that we'll never have nerve enough to go around kidnapping people right off the highways. Like he's done. And... I, oh, he tells me to take off my dress. And he used to tell me to take off my dress and then before I have a, even have a chance hardly to stand up to do it, the examiner, it had, my dress has a zipper down the back. Down the back? Yeah, it has a zipper down the back. And the examiner unzips my dress. It goes way down on my waist, as the zipper does. And 
so I slept my dress off. And so I don't have my, my dress or my shoes on. And the, the, uh, next over, away in the stool, and then there's in the, sort of in the middle of the room is a table. Something of a table. It's not up very high. About the same height as a desk. So, uh, I lie down on the table, on my back, and he brings over this, uh, uh, oh, how can I describe it? They're like needles. There's a whole cluster of needles. And each needle has a wire running from it. So then they roll me over on my back. And the examiner has a roll of needle in his head. And I see the needle. And it, it's, it's bigger than any needle I've ever seen. And he, I asked him what he's going to do with it. And he said, just a simple test to vote to me. And I asked him what. And he said, he just wants to put it in my navel. Yeah, it's just a simple test. I don't know, it won't hurt, don't do it, don't do it. And he's a no, it won't hurt. And he takes a needle into my nail. And says, <laughs> and I'm crying and I tell him it's hurting, 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 he goes over and he puts his hand, runs his hand in front of my eyes. And he says, I'll be all right. I won't feel it. Oh. And all the pain goes away. That, oh, but I still, I still, the pain goes away, but I'm still sore for where they put that, these, I don't know why they put that long piece with my navel. I tried to tell them it was, they should do it. Did they make any sexual advances to you? No. They didn't. No. I asked the leader, I said, why did he stick the needle, why did they stick the needle in my navel? And he said it was a pregnancy test. And I said, well, I don't know what they expected, but that was no pregnancy test here. And he didn't say any more. So, the examiner, would help, he helped me get up off the table, and I swung around, and my sh he gave me my shoes, and I put those on, and got down on the floor, and my dress was there, and I put my dress on, and he, I was, he, I was going to zip it up, and he took a hold of it at the top and pulled it up, and then, oh, I said, 
I can go now. I can go back to the car. And he said, Bonnie isn't ready yet. And so then I began to get worried, and I kept, I asked him why it was taking so long with Bonnie. And he said, well, they were doing a few more tests with him. But he'd be right along in a minute. And, uh, the, uh, there was a cabinet there. And the exact, the, the doctor, the examiner, I mean, it, it, he had gone out of the room. There was just the, the leader in me there. So there was a doctor there, you say? I, and the man who did the examining, he did the testing, and he left. And so there was just the leader in me. And so uh, I felt, I mean, I was grateful to him because he had stopped my pain, and, and now I wasn't afraid at all. And so I started talking with the leader, and I said to him that this had been quite an experience. It was unbelievable that no one would ever, ever believe me, and that most people didn't even know he was alive, and that what I needed was some proof that this had really happened. So he laughed, and he said, well, what kind of proof did I want? What would I like? And I said, well, if he could give me something to take back with me, then people would believe it. And so he told me to look around. And maybe I could find something I would like to take. And I did. And there wasn't much around. But on the cabinet, there was a book. A, a, a fairly big book. So... I, uh, I, I put my hand on the book and I said, could I have this? And the, the leader laughed and he asked me if I thought I could read it. And I told him, no, I laughed too. I said, no, but I wasn't taking it to read that this was going to be my proof that this had happened. That, that this is my proof. And so he said that I could, ha I could have the book if I wanted it. And I picked it up and I was delighted. I mean, this was this was one, this was, uh, more than I'd ever hoped for. He went over across the room to the head of the table. And there was, he, he did something. He opened up, uh, it wasn't like a drawer. 
he thought I did something in, in the metal of the wall. There was an opening, and he pulled down a map. And he asked me, had I ever seen a map like this before? And I walked across the room, and I leaned against the table, and I looked at it. And it was a map of, it was an oblong map. And he said that, the heavy lines were trade routes. And then the other lines, the other line, the, 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 the solid lines were places they went occasionally. And he said that The broken lines were expeditions. So I asked him where he, what, where was his home port? And he said, where's the, where are you? on this map. And I looked and I laughed and I said, I don't know. So he said, well then, if you don't know where you are, there wouldn't be any point of my telling you where I am. And he put the map, he, the, he, the map rolled up and he put it back in the space in the wall and closed it. And I felt very stupid because I didn't know where the earth was on the map. And I asked him, well, could he show me? Well, could he open up the map again and show me what the earth was? And he just laughed. And then I still, I got the book. I still got the book. I'm carrying the book. I got it in my eyes. It's a big book. I don't... And so I went back to the cabinet and put the book down and started to look through it again. And there was all of a sudden this noise out in the hall. And some of the other men come in and with them is the examiner. And they're quite excited. So I asked the leader, I said, what's the matter? Did, did something happen to Barney? What, what is that? Well, it's something to do with Barney. And the, the examiner has me, op has me open my mouth. And he starts checking my teeth. And they're tugging at them. And I asked him, what are they trying to do? What were they doing at them? They were try pulling, tugging at tugging my teeth. Tugging at them, yes. Yes. And the, the examiner said that they were very, he was very excited. And he said that... <laughs> <laughs> he said that they couldn't figure it out. Body teeth came out and I didn't. <laughs> and I, I was really laughing. And <laughs> I 
said that Barney had ten shows, and I didn't, and that's why his teeth would come out. <laughs> and they, so then they asked me what were ten shows. And I said that people, as they got older, washed their teeth. They had to go to the dentist and have their teeth extracted. And they put in dentures. Or a person, sometimes, and Barney had to have dentures because he had, he injured, he had a mouth injury of some sort and he had to have his teeth extracted. All these things you ask me, I don't know. I'm a very limited person when it when talking, trying to talk with you. But there are other people in this country who are not like me that they would be most happy to talk with them. That they could answer all his questions. And maybe if he could come back, if we could make arrangements for a meeting, I could, maybe I could, if he gave me time enough, somehow I could find these people. And I could arrange for him to meet them and it would have to be done so there'd be no danger involved. I, I wouldn't want him to be exposed to any danger. That I don't know how I could do it. I don't know how I could. I'd work it out somehow. But If he, if he could come, uh, I want him to come back. I want him to, the, and he's just looking at me, and I, will you come back? Can we make, can, can we work out something? And then his answers, his questions would all have answers, and and other people could get the things that all the things I'd like to know too. And he says, "I don't know. I don't know. It, it it's not my decision to make." So I said, "Well, could you discuss it with the person?" Who does have the decision to make? And he said, yes. And I said, well, if you do decide to come back, I mean, if it can be worked out, I would need time. I, I It would take some time. I mean, I just couldn't go out on the spur of the moment and round up people to meet with you. It would have to be people that we knew would be all right and, and would have the background and all. And and I wouldn't even know where to meet him. Or, or. And he laughed. He said, don't worry. If we decide to come back, We'll be able to find you all right. But I said, but I don't live around here. I don't live in this area. And he said, we'll find you. And I said, how? How will you find me? I have millions of people. And he said, we will. We always do find those we want to. And I said, well, now what do you mean by that remark? And he just laughed. And then, Barney's coming. 
they're bringing Barney out of, I hear the, I hear the men out in the corridor. And I said, Barney's coming. And he said, yes, you can go back to the car now. And I got the book. And Barney's coming out. And Barney's eyes are so shut. Good heavens. <laughs> He's missed an awful lot. I wonder if he made him keep his eyes shut or if he's scared. And so, they, uh, anyway, uh, now it's time to go back to the car, and the leader said, come on, we'll walk back to the car with you. I said, all right. I said, but I do wish, I wish I knew if you were going to come back. They said, well, we'll see. And we're out into the corridor. Barney's behind me. There's his eyes shut. There's a man on each side of him. And I'm starting, I'm all ready to go down the ramp when some of the other men, not, not the leader, but some of the other men are talking. I don't know what they're saying. But they're very excited. And, and the leader is saying, he's, he's saying something. And they're quite, they're, 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 they don't, they're undecided about something. And then, oh, the leader comes over and takes my book. And I said, oh, I'm furious. I said, you promised me I could have the book. You gave me a word you, I could have it. And he said, I know it. He says, but the others object. They don't want you to have it. And I said, but this is my proof. If you take the book away from me, I'll have no proof that this has happened. And he said, that's the whole point. They don't want you to know it's happened. They want you to forget all about it. And that's why I'm taking the book. And I won't forget about it. You you can take the book, but you never, never, never can make me forget about it. Because I'll remember it's the last thing I ever do. <laughs> but I want the book. He won't give it to me. And he says, he laughs. He, he says, Maybe you will remember. I don't know. I hope you don't. But maybe you will. But it won't do you any good if you do. Because Barney won't. Barney won't remember one single thing. And not only that, if he should remember anything at all, he's going to remember it differently from you. And all you got to do is get each other so confused you won't know what's going on. If you do remember, it'd be better if you forgot it anyway. But I said, why? But you try to threaten me because you can't scare me because I won't forget it. I'll remember it somehow. So then he said, all right, now, come on, let's go back to the car. We'll go back to the, we'll take you back to the car. And, oh, I've been standing there on the side of the ramp talking to him. And, I'm not so bad now. And they have taken Barney ahead while we were talking. So he, the other men are going ahead. 
And he said, he said, you know, he said, I, I had no objection to you having the book, but the others object, and they have as much right to make this decision as I do. So I said, all right. I won't be mad at you, but it is the most, I wish I could be able to have some proof of this, because it's the most unbelievable thing that's ever happened.